Hey everybody, today Rado runs down the Realm of Sand, which is a very puzzly tile laying game where one to four players are magicians helping the all-powerful queen restore the shattered Realm of Sand to its former glory. And the way it works is, on your turn, usually you will take one of the three tiles you've got in your own personal queue. These represent the magic that the queen is out there collecting. You'll take one of these magic tiles and deploy it on your board um, and use it as a template to actually put these little individual magic tiles out. So of my three, I might say do this. And then the tile I've used goes to the end of the queue. And at the end of my turn, I have, or where the queen is, I take the next one or the one immediately after that. And based on my current circumstances, I think this would be the perfect one for me to take. And then the queen moves on. Then it is the next player's turn. The, everybody has their own unique individual board with special layouts and also special cool unique powers. And these are all very powerful in different ways. My power is, once I unlock it, I can twice, when I activate my power, swap two of the tiles I've got that maybe I don't want for ones later on in the queue that I desperately want. That can be a really big game changer uh, under certain circumstances. But let's say somebody else went and they did a thing and then they ultimately uh, took this one and this is the one that ended up getting placed. And now it comes back to me, back to my turn again. Once again, I will take a tile and place it out. The new one I just grabbed that I was so excited about. And again, it's just a template. It doesn't actually get placed. It just shows me where to place these little magic tiles. And at any point during your turn, if you have matched the pattern of one or more of these cards, you can claim these cards for their rewards. And as you can see, boom, I have nailed this one. And now you can uh, you can do it in a straight away or mirrored or rotated or whatever. I've got this layout. So I have scored two points. I've gotten one hourglass and once a player gets 10 hourglasses that triggers the end of the game and i've also gotten two spirit tokens a green and a black one now these are a finite resource once they're gone they're gone I mean, you know and players want to gobble them up as fast as they can which is why in the early game you probably want to build several of these low levels to get more of these spirit tokens all right so i've done that and because i've done this all those tiles come off the board leaving these other ones. And now, if I was smart, I have been building such that these remaining ones could uh, dovetail into something else. Now at this point, they can because I wasn't that smart, but at the end of my turn, another card is gonna come out, but not before I choose. I'd like to know what this is, but right now I gotta choose one of these next two before I get to see it, because this basically happens at the beginning of the next turn. Let's see, so a double black and green or a double black and red. Well, I can see there's this double black here, um, and let's see, there's this green over here, but I've got more red. What the heck? Let's go on ahead and just kind of double down on red. Alrighty. So that was it. That was my turn. At the end of the turn, this comes out. Now, I forgot one more thing that was hugely important. When I built this particular pattern, this lovely little, oh, it looks like a farmhouse and uh, maybe a smith, you know, just kind of this nice little area that was built and restored to the realm, the, the, the material realm, because we're working here in the magical sand realm and it builds these buildings in the regular realm. Uh, it's all about our backstory. But anyway, when I did this, I revealed this token that I had previously covered up. Whenever you build and reveal this, that gives you your power. Now, on a future turn or on my next turn, I could use my power, dump two of these, and get the two things I need to build exactly what I want. But I'll save my power for now. Uh, and what do I want to build next? Well, the interesting thing is I've got all these blacks, so I could chase that one, or I could chase this one. The level twos give you more points, uh, generally speaking, more hourglasses, so they speed the game up, and they have the potential to give you blue or yellow spirits. Because you'll notice, the really big ones, like 14 points, 12 points, these need blue and yellow spaces in the patterns you're making, there's no blue and yellow anywhere around here. So far, as I explained, on your turn, you place one of these and you put the three tokens out. Instead of placing one of these, you could place all the spirit tokens you have accumulated, and they give you so much more flexibility because you can put them wherever you want. So that's why in the early game, you want to collect a bunch of these. So I think I do want to chase after that, and I've already got one. So if I get one here and two here, so I will build this like a so, which means I am actually doing that, that, and that. Okay, and this comes back over here. And now all I gotta do is get one black one there, and I will have completed this. Then I'll have a bunch of spirit tokens, but in the meantime, I gotta pick one of these. And you know what I'm thinking? I might wanna start building towards this big green. I like that, so I'll take this one. I'll jump ahead and take this one. All right, 
And then another player goes, of course, and they end up taking this and putting this out. And, and when it's uh, my turn again, hey! Oh, no, okay, I was going to say I have a bit of a problem. Of course, because I can't go like this, because I can't build off the edge. Also, I can't go like this, let's say. That's not legal, because you'll notice there's light and dark areas. At the beginning of the game, I can only build in the light areas. But once I get upgrades like this and start upgrading my power meter, I could start building more and more in the darkness as well. And that could be hugely powerful in that I'm not quite so limited. But for now, I'll just go ahead and build this anyway like this, because... That gives me the next one that I wanted. Bippity bippity bop. This comes back out here. And hey, I have done this, which gives me a red spirit token. Two points in my second hourglass. These all go away, leaving a scatter shot of tokens that hopefully can be the basis for something else that will come along. Um, or do I abandon them? Because the interesting thing is, on a future turn, I could go like this, let's say, and replace this red with the green if I just want to start trying to collect a lot of green tiles. But I want to get to this green tile! But it's the third one, I can't get to it! So, what am I going to do instead? Well, I should pick one of these that will benefit me trying to get to one of these quicker, or on a turn, rather than say I take this one uh, just arbitrarily, rather than placing these, I can place up to three of my spirit tokens wherever I want. So if I was really trying to, like, well, actually, yeah, this is. I mean, I, on my next turn, I might do spirit tokens and put a black one here and a red one. Oops, sorry, a red one here, a black one here, because hey, look at that. I've made this one. Um, and so this goes away, these come back into my supply, and now I'm collecting more and more spirit tokens so in a future turn I can be more flexible. Because on my turn I can either put one of these tiles out that puts three things on the board, or I can put three of these out with a lot more flexibility. But as you might imagine, these get gobbled up pretty quick in the early game because they're so powerful. Um, right, and of course, uh, I've still, if I don't like these, you know, maybe now's the time to start building the green, because I could go for that. And then later on I could go for that, erasing that, and then I would just need one single green, and I could build this! Which would give me my first yellow. And with a yellow, I could build this 9-point palace. With a second yellow, I could build this 14-point palace. But in the meantime, I have now leveled up twice, which means I can build in two dark spaces and uh, two more hourglasses. Remember, once somebody has collected 10 hourglasses, that triggers the end of the game. And that, folks, is the rundown on Realm of Sand. I've just gotten started, but this game is really deceptively simple. There's a lot going on, and as the game goes on and you have more and more of those spirit tokens and you, you switch from trying to grab the quick easy ones to go for the big long-term ones, it can really get very, very deep and very thinky about how to achieve what you need to with the limited resources and the restrictions you're under. And then also, again, trying to leverage all these powers, um, being able to move a tile after the fact, um, being able to swap spirit tokens if you want a color that you uh, really need but you can't get because you can't complete the thing you want. This one, instead of just putting out one spirit token, put out all your spirit tokens all at once. Um, you know, really, really cool stuff. Very, very clever, very fun, and very approachable. This is a game that's very, very easy to teach. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've ever really thought to yourself, hey, I really like patchwork, you know, the, the, the tiling Tetra style from Uwe Rosenberg, and you thought, but I really want to play with more than two players, because that's a two player only game. Realm of Sand might be what you're looking for, folks. And that is the rundown. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.